Now we're going to talk about different types of educational technology educators can adopt to enhance teaching and learning. So educational technology software is one of them, social media technology, audio and visual technology, virtual classrooms, whiteboards, mobile technology, computers and tablets. Now with me in studio is Dr. Tembi Mayaise and uh, Dr. Nyarai Tunjera will be joining us uh, via Skype and she carries a doctorate in education here to tell us more about educational technology. Uh, Dr. Tembi, you're welcome. Thank you so much. I just want to know this, does educational technology for both teaching and learning, can you tell us what the difference is? Okay. Um, everyone is talking technology and educational technology, yes. especially in this era where we actually have COVID that has actually influenced the way in which things are done, obviously right. including the way in which lecturers or teachers have actually been um, educating their learners. Yes. So when we look at the technologies, you may find that quite often the very same technology that the teachers use uh, is the very same technology that learners actually need to have access to so that they can have um, access to the content that has been made available by yes. their teachers. Yes. So or at the end of the day, it depends on which aspect you are actually focusing on. Right. Are you focusing on uh, the delivery of the content mm -hmm. by the teachers to uh, the students or is it both ways where you are expecting some form of interaction between yes, yes. the learners and the teachers. And the teachers yes. So there's different technologies that are out there mm -hmm. but the most important thing is to try and look at it from a need perspective. Okay. What type of need you know are the teachers actually so seeking that particular piece mm -hmm. of uh, technology for? Yes. Is it for them just to deliver that content or is okay. it for them to just have a way or a mechanism of engaging their learners with. So it depends on the need. On the need. Yes. So would I be correct uh, in saying that uh, it depends on, on, on the interaction as well for the success of, of, of educational technology. It depends on the interaction that happens between the teachers and the learners. Exactly. Like uh, currently you'll find that a lot of students um, are actually learning mm. uh, online through mm. various applications. Okay. They're actually having meetings through different platforms, etc., yes. etc. Et yes. Now, there's also a passive uh, learning to that, even mm. though technology is behind it, where, for instance, you find that um, lecturers or teachers, they move towards a mode of just doing recordings okay. in order to supply the content to the oh, learner yes. later on. Yes. So when you look at that mode of learning, mm. there is really no... Uh, real-time online engagement, yes, that's so true. but a yes. student is able to go and retrieve the content mm -hmm. and at their spare time they can basically, you know, um, yeah. interact if need be, you know, ask yes. questions via email to their uh, respective teachers to try and, you know, understand the content more. Yeah. And there's also another part to this which is now looking at a, a system which has actually been designed to basically store content mm -hmm. and to disseminate that content right. to targeted groups of students. Okay. So from time to time you find that lecturers have to up load their content and mm. make it available to mm. their learners and you know so that the learners can actually um, have a look and uh, review that content. Yes, yes. Now it's a very interesting space to be at mm. because um, it's introducing a certain culture of, of doing course. things more especially when you look at uh, education, mm. when you look at the culture of learning as we have previously known it. Yes. Where now um, if you've for instance, been very comfortable to do your teaching behind the scenes, yeah. and now you have to record yourself. Mm. Now you have to be out there. Mm. You're now opening yourself up to educating more yes. than one learner. Yes. So it's yes. a very interesting space, um, a lot of anxiety around it, of but it is happening. Is this a new norm for educators? I think yes, um, especially in South Africa, it's mm. very, it very much is. Okay. I believe a, a lot of institutions have been having these technologies, you yes. know, yes. but it has not been maximized I previously. Okay. It's only now that we had to look at different ways of actually reaching out to mm. the learners and making sure that, you know, uh, we don't actually lose out on the time because there are no contact sessions or there were no contact sessions that we could actually do due to COVID. Yes. That now a lot of, um, you know, institutions 
institutions are actually investing a lot of effort in trying to explore the capabilities that have been lying dormant in their institutions right, so that right. at least learning uh, and education can actually um, happen. Yeah. Does this have levels? Like, does it, does it, is it only for tertiary? Is it only for, for universities? Or does it start from the lowest level? I'm talking about now the, 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 the smaller grades. Yes. You know what? Um, that's a very tricky situation or a tricky mm. question purely yeah. because, you know, there's different groups in societies, mm. right? We've mm. got public schools. We also yes. have private schools. Right. And what I've also gotten to um, uncover or discover, mm. rather, mm. is that um, with a lot of students uh, in, in, in private schools, mm -hmm. that mode of learning is something that they're actually very familiar with. Right. You know? right. But when you look at the public school sector, you actually mm -hmm. see that there are certain gaps here and mm -hmm. there. But when you look at the tertiary institution levels, mm -hmm. it is the technology that has been there. Okay. But like I said, you find that it was not utilized yes. extensively yes. because yes. in any event, we are used to having those physical contact sessions. Mm. Yeah. So COVID-19 actually helped us to, to, to be pushed towards that direction. Yes, it pushed us a lot to that uh, direction and as a result you find that you know it was a lot of trying to understand how best to utilize the technology yes. to do the things that previously you wouldn't yeah. worry about. For yes. instance, you find that you know we, we've been comfortable with just doing uh, manual assessments where right. you'd have your students come to um, an institution yes. to write a test and mm -hmm. go back to res or go back home. Yes. Whereas now you have to rely on technology mm. to be able to conduct such assessments. Yes. It's, it's a good thing, but it has also opened our eyes to other realities yeah. in terms of some things that can just go wrong yes, through yes. those channels. True. Yes. So it's a good thing for, for educators and learners to make themselves best friends with this kind of technology I, I think there's no turning back you yes. know we just have to make it work we just have to get to understand how to maximize the capabilities right. and move forward with it because is this, it is the future of course is this an international thing that is happening I would say looking at the impact that COVID has, mm. I mean, it's, it's across the globe. It's, it's international. Yes. It's just that obviously in Africa, we may find that we were not really, you know, paying much attention to yes. the use of such technologies right. because we've just been very much comfortable mm. with the mm. way in which we've been, you know, um, delivering our content yes. to our students, vice versa. Yeah. But again, from a, an informal context, there's also a lot of drive from um, the student side of things where, you know, because of this technology that is out there, which is not necessarily pushed from um, a formal institution perspective. Yes. There's a lot of courses that are, you know, rendered uh, by various institutions. Some okay. are for free. Yes. Some are actually, um, you pay a minimal fee or even yes. an expensive amount to mm -hmm. actually have access. Okay. So with that, it's, it's posing another dynamic to the whole learning system. Okay. Because you find that there's a lot of knowledge that our students are actually getting from various sources. So mm -hmm. if you actually now have to render a lecture or yes. you know teach students, right. they are so rich in their knowledge mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they've actually you know um, upskilled themselves from That's different right. avenues. Is there a, a similar upskillment, if I may put it that way, for the educators as well? Because I'm thinking about this. There are those educators who only know what they know until now. Now you speak of uh, uh, educational technology, you're speaking a different language to them. Are there any skills development uh, uh, programs that are set for such educators? Yes, I think most, I won't speak for all the institutions, but yes. uh, for, for most institutions that I know of, mm. they are making you know uh, strides in making sure that the educators mm. receive the necessary Skilling, skilling in yes. terms of uh, the latest technology that right. they have to use to deliver yes. you know the content to the students mm -hmm. but I would say that on its own is not enough okay. you know okay. as an educator you have to go an extra mile mm. and try and do your own research okay. and see what works for you and what doesn't work for you mm. so that you can enhance your own tools That's that right. will make it effort an effortless exercise yes. to deliver content to your to your learners yeah Wow. We're going to go on a commercial break, and when we come back, we have a Dr. Nyarai who will be joining us through Skype, and she'll be telling us more about what we're talking about, and uh, Dr. Tembi as well will be sharing with us more on educational technology. Stay tuned. Tech Talk brought to you by Tamani Technologies and Systems. Tamani Technologies and Systems takes leadership in fourth industrial revolution. 
the whole world is facing a transformation. The revolution will be developed into the following stages. Digitization, cyber security, internet of things, managed services, document management, and business applications. We provide business transformation and ICT solutions with presence in 13 African countries and two European countries. We are your leading partner in integrated platform providers, innovation leaders, standalone products, and innovation pace setters. Tamani Technologies and Systems, delivering value across continents. The power to defeat coronavirus is in our hands. Play your part by following these five basic precautions. Regularly wash your hands with soap and water or sanitizer for at least 20 seconds. Maintain a safe distance of at least one and a half meters from people around you. Wear a cloth mask at all times when in public. Always cough or sneeze into your elbow or tissue. If you're an employer, screen your employees daily for symptoms of COVID-19 and where appropriate, refer for testing. Working together, we can beat the coronavirus. A message from government. Challenge your ordinary. Experience the extraordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Now, I believe that my peace is my most valuable asset. Absolutely beautiful! Ah! This is exactly what I was looking for! Camping, camping, camping! DJ Khaled! It is a day to celebrate. We're ready for action. I like it when it's nice and soft. Yeah, that and is uh, nice. How was it like growing up in Nigeria? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is. Feeling is there that, you know, you're doing something special. Stop being so dramatic, Mira. You should just be what you want to be. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. Violence and sexual abuse against children has become a major social challenge during the COVID-19 lockdown. We appeal to adults, parents and caregivers to be kind towards children during this lockdown and beyond. Give children the space they need to engage with their reading and learning activities. Do not hit them. Do not yell at them. They are equally frustrated. We urge you to listen, support and help the children to survive the COVID-19 lockdown. Report immediately any incident of sexual abuse. The Department of Basic Education. Every child is a national asset. Feel the heat. I love Adam Selman. The girls are really thin. I think it looks very glamorous from the outside. The life of a model in New York City. There is such cool prints. So many. You know, I'm buying this. Look at me and all the selfie sort of thing. Honestly, I didn't really know that was actually a job. It just didn't occur to me. Congratulations. Feel the excitement. Feel the heat with Starset. Feel the heat. Chicken portions are an easy way to feed a crowd. I've just started to incorporate all my ingredients. We're gonna put this inside of a hot cast iron skillet. You wanna really fill up on great protein. It's now time to sample the chef's dish. Mm -hmm. Look at this. I know. Like that? Feel the excitement. The chicken is on the spot. Feel the heat with Starset. Feel the heat. Do you dream of awesome cartoons filled with funny characters who go on extraordinary adventures? <laughs> Everybody ready? Ready! Hold on, I'm coming! This is absolute genius. I'm on my way. I'm ready. Right, let's go! <laughs> Feel the excitement. Like it? I love it! Feel the heat with Starset. <laughs> Feel the heat.
Feel the heat with. Welcome back. This is Tech Talk on Galaxy with myself, Mbumi Mbama, and I've got Dr. Tembi with us in studio, who is telling us more about educational technology. And we also have Dr. Uh, Nyarai Tunjera, who is on Skype. Doc, you're welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Mbumi. It's nice having you. Thank you very much. Doc, I just want to go straight to this question. What are the, the five components of educational technology. I know there's five basic uh, domains on the field, namely design, development, utilization, management, and evaluation. Can you tell us more about these? Uh, thank you for me. Yes. Uh, when you're looking at educational technology, mm. um, I think Dr. Tembi has mentioned the issue to deal with um, education and technology these are two different domains yes. that are being combined combined so that they complement each other yes. for the betterment of teaching and learning okay. so uh with education we've got what we call theory of practice yes. some theories that are specifically meant for teachers to teach effectively okay. so that there will be learning taking place yes. so we do have those uh five um uh, components that we, we look at when you are designing an instructional technology okay. or when you are going to design an, a, a learning um, a learning uh, or a learning class uh, using technology right. we do have the design uh, first of all instructional system design how are you going to uh, com use that technology yes. for instruction so it's very important that you've got some instructional strategies that you need to engage with for example, if I look at the current scenario that we are in, as uh, Dr. Tembi said, yes. uh, COVID got uh, most educational institutions hmm. taking naps. Um, no one thought these four walls would be broken. That's right. So with that, we find that, that these instructional strategies, hmm. teachers were used to stand in front of students. That's true. And engage with the students in, in, in physical form. Yeah. But now there is this virtual form that we industry adopted it yes if you look at banking systems if you look at uh, communication systems if you look at various industry now we we've got this uh, robotics coming in yes. a lot of industry i have in, uh, invested in so for us as educators mm. we need to have instructional technologies that um um until what is it that we intend to produce at the end of giving an instruction what is the learning outcome that we need to come up with yes. and we also need to understand the characteristics of our learners so as you design you are not just designing something that doesn't have some other factors that you need to look at yes. so basically the design is a well thought plan okay how am i going to use this technology yes what is it that i'm going to teach how am i going to teach what is it that i really want to produce at the end of the lesson yes so that is the first uh, level of the design um the, the concept i mean the the components of educational technology right then if i move on to the actual development yes um i, I know i am at cput okay. uh, where our students are limited in terms of um access to digital resources yes when we talk about connectivity we talk about the actual devices okay. the mobile devices or the laptops that they need in order for them to be active participants in this digital um learning space right so you find that within the development uh infrastructure of a technological instructional design yes uh, we do have some different technologies that you might need to look at we do have the print technologies mm -hmm. uh, where we can come up with um printed hard copy right or either soft copy okay. can be a, okay. a form of print uh, technology yes we, we do have audio visual technologies yes and computer-based technologies yep. integrated technologies we are looking at just the the aspect of developmental uh, development in terms of our uh, um, educational technology yes. components. Yes. And to move on to utilization, as you had it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> utilization in itself it is uh, it involves a lot of um, aspects. We look at the media utilization. Hmm. How are we going to engage with the various media that our learners are exposed to, or that our learners you have an intent so that your learners will be able to engage with that kind of media. Right. So for example, 
um, in my uh, current practice, yes. I have realized that um, my students, they don't have access to high-end devices. Oh, okay. So, so the challenge that I had now is to reach them. And I know some teachers are using WhatsApp, hmm. WhatsApp to, to teach yes. a class of 120 students. Oh, okay. Where they might... Be, when they are using the voice or they, they use the voice notes and yes. students comments yeah so with that kind of uh, media utilization yes. it might not be that effective i was going to so say that yeah yeah mm, yes now i was going to uh, say that it, it might not be that effective if they use mm, yeah okay please go on yes so so you you realize that uh, with such environment where we are looking at this media utilization mm. yes we are in a i mean education was not ready for mm. this kind of um uh, teaching yes. we were yes. all not ready yes you find that actually my thesis uh, my phd thesis was looking at that mm. and what i've realized from my study was uh, educators they don't understand it the affordances that yeah. technology can give. Right. What right. They, were, they are doing currently is their substitution. Mm. Our our old technologies, like writing on the board, mm. and they substitute it with a, a PowerPoint presentation. Right. To them, mm. they are utilizing technology. They okay. are utilizing these media media tools. Yes. So it's quite it's quite an interesting um, <laughs> uh, thing that we might just really need to look at is uh, this new 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 thing, yes. new form of things yeah. uh, is uh, is coming in. So within the utilization also, we also need to look at policies and regulations okay. because they play a very important role yeah. in the way we engage with these technologies. Okay. I know technologies, uh, if, you, if, you, if you come up with this, I think I remember my masters, I was talking about the, the affordance of a WhatsApp uh, messenger yes. for teaching and learning. That yes. was my, my research. And I was saying, you know what, because our learners they, they, are, they can be separated in space, hmm. but that creates a, 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 a some form of some uh, some uh, they they won't be able to get uh, answers instantly. Yes. Whilst I'm doing my homework, hmm. I must also want to ask someone: Did you did I get it correct? Hmm. Am I doing the correct thing? Yes. Is this the yes. way that the lecturer said we should do? Yes. Then yes. I need the, those answers instantly so that I will engage with whatever I'm doing. Yes. But looking at it. Uh, with WhatsApp Messenger, a lot of people are using it for social. I mean, we communicate, we, we get in touch with our friends, That's we, very we true, send yes. audios. These days, it's now even more so sophisticated than then it was in 2014. That's right, so yes. you realize that uh, there is potential, but with education now, it is a different uh, environment. Mm -hmm. They've got theories. They've got ways of doing things. Yeah. So for us just to take a WhatsApp and just put it there because it's a communication tool, yeah. let's engage with it. It becomes yeah. difficult. It becomes so difficult. the issue yeah. of utilization and policies and regulation within the um, educational technology mm -hmm. is quite important. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Nirai, just, in just to interject on that, um, uh, if I hear you correctly, you concur with uh, Dr. Tembi in saying that uh, this is a, a, a new norm that also the educators that are used to, you know, standing in front of the, of, of, of the board and writing manually, they now need to get used to this new type of teaching. Is that correct? Yes, yes, you are right. Um, because I, what I'm saying here is, it is very, it's a new something. You know, yeah. it's new. <laughs> it's just like you are going to, the, you are going to the north, yes. and suddenly you need to go to the east. That's right. So it's quite uh, a new process that, as educators, I know some developed countries they've been looking at it. Yeah. But yeah. this COVID now brought about a new way of looking at it. They were looking at uh, technology as a form of a substitute or a, a something that supplement or complements yes. uh, the current teachers' practices. But yes. if you look at things right now, the new norm mm. Uh, mm. It's, mm. A, it's, it's a it's a turnaround yes. um, concept that is coming in. Yeah. Doctor, I just need to ask you this question uh, before we go on a break. Uh, why is technology used in schools except helping to keep the students stay engaged? I know that uh, Dr. Tembi touched on that, but can we have your view on that? 
Um, yes, just to add on on what uh, Dr. Tembi mentioned in t uh, earlier on, yes. uh, you realize that te uh, the technology hmm. is um, an open market. It's an open right. resource okay. where people can use it in various skill. I mean, various um, areas. Yeah. So. For specifically for teaching and learning for schools to use it, mm. uh, besides that engagement of uh, a teacher and students and students and students, uh, there is the aspect of skill development. Yes, yes. With this COVID, a lot of uh, people have managed to mm. use this technology yes. to upskill themselves. Right. So there are courses is, that yeah. are being offered out there okay. that can one can access for free. Beautiful. Dr. Tembi, what is though the role of technology in, in education? I mean, we know, we have seen uh, in most cases, it has changed how teachers and students gather and access information as Dr. Nyerai has mentioned and you have mentioned earlier on. Uh, but we just want to know, what is the role of technology in education from your view? Okay. I think the role is, is quite broad, okay. but the main role I think is to be a platform that facilitates, mm -hmm. you know, learning and teaching. Okay. Because when we talk te technology, we're talking about a broad spectrum mm -hmm. of applications, okay. of various, you know, gadgets that are out there yes. that are at the disposal of both educators and learners. Right. So depending on the need of a learner or the need for an educator, mm -hmm. it can basically fill up a lot of uh, roles um, okay. as far as its use is concerned. Yes. Um, for instance, uh, like I mentioned, mentioned at the beginning that yeah. um, currently a lot of institutions are basically using you know technology on the fly because at the end of the day it work needs to be done yes. students need to actually you know progress with their studies yes. but I'm not sure if there's been enough work that has actually been done in trying to understand the type of technology that will be appropriate to meet specific needs of the learners. So that's where the gap is. Hence, you find that in certain institutions or in certain groups of students, there are certain learners that are starting to be a bit disengaged. So technology okay. is not the only way in which you know learning can be, facil uh, uh, can be facilitated. Yes. It's just that currently, mm -hmm. we need it because it's the only thing that um, it's, it's making us sort of like even break geographical boundaries. Of it doesn't course, matter yes. where a student is located now. Yes. As long as yes. you can connect, then you know learning happens. Yeah. But it's there's a lot of work, like what uh, Dr. Nyarai was saying. Yes. There's, there's a lot of work that has to be done in terms of trying to understand from a theoretical perspective. You know what are the needs yeah. in terms of the types of learning styles that you know. Um, traditionally we've actually been having yes. you know will this type of technology mm -hmm. be able to relay or it allow the educators yes. to channel the content in the appropriate way in which the learners will be able to understand yes. and yes. be assessed accordingly mm -hmm. so I, I think for me that is the big learning curve that's or the biggest yeah. assignment that still needs to be done uh, so that we can actually move and mature yes. in this aspect of educational technology yeah. Yes. Dr. Nyerai, would, like would you like to add on what Dr. Terbi has just said? Uh, thank you, Mpo. Um, I, I think what I just have to add is, uh, yes, uh, we do know that uh, technology is not, in a, it's not like the answer to all things. Yes. Uh, we also need to relate to it with our current uh, environments and yeah. contexts. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but my, 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 for, for my own opinion, uh, we just need to be prepared as educators That's right, <laughs> because yes. this technology is not going anywhere. Yes. And yes. right now we are talking about using, I and mean, I know some of the institutions are still teaching uh, computer appreciation, mm. but now the world is looking at fourth industrial revolution yes, where we robotics are coming yeah. in. Yeah. And uh, for my uh, encouragement to educational institution is we are lagging behind. Mm -hmm. We yes. just need to yes. catch yeah. up yeah. because the products that we are producing, they are not going to fit into the current communities that is being created right. by this digital um, era that we are in yes. currently. Yes. So summing it up, for, for, before we go on a break, uh, for you, Dr. Nyerai and Dr. Tembi, uh, would, would, would we now say that um, the educators now need to come on board so that this educational technology can be effective for everyone? Yes. Yes, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. 
Okay. We'll go on a commercial break, and when we come back, we speak more. But now we're going to be looking at educational tools, technology tools, on what is going on there. So join us after the break. Stay tuned. Tech Talk brought to you by Tamani Technologies and Systems. Tamani Technologies and Systems takes leadership in fourth industrial revolution. The whole world is facing a transformation. The revolution will be developed into the following stages. Digitization, cyber security, internet of things, managed services, document management, and business applications. We provide business transformation and ICT solutions with presence in 13 African countries and two European countries. We are your leading partner in integrated platform providers, innovation leaders, standalone products, and innovation pace setters. Tamani Technologies and Systems, delivering value across continents. The power to defeat coronavirus is in our hands. Play your part by following these five basic precautions. Regularly wash your hands with soap and water or sanitizer for at least 20 seconds. Maintain a safe distance of at least one and a half meters from people around you. Wear a cloth mask at all times when in public. Always cough or sneeze into your elbow or tissue. If you're an employer, screen your employees daily for symptoms of COVID-19 and where appropriate, refer for testing. Working together, we can beat the coronavirus. A message from government. Challenge your ordinary. Experience the extraordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Now, I believe that my peace is my most valuable asset. Absolutely beautiful! This is exactly what I was looking for! Camping, camping, camping! DJ Khaled! It is a day to celebrate. We're ready for action. I like it when it's nice and soft. Yeah, that is yeah. nice. How was it like growing up in Nigeria? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is. Feeling is there that, you know, you're doing something special. Stop being so dramatic, Mira. You should just be what you want to be. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. Feel the heat. I love Adam Selman. The girls are really thin. I think it looks very glamorous from the outside. The life of a model in New York City. There is such cool prints. So many. You know, I'm buying this. Look at me and all the selfie sort of thing. Honestly, I didn't really know that was actually a job. It just didn't occur to me. Congratulations. Feel the excitement. Feel the heat with... Welcome back. In case you have just joined us, uh, this is Tech Talk on Galaxy, and I have Dr. Nyarai in studio via Skype, and I've got Dr. Tembi also joining us. We're talking about educational technology. Now we're going to be discussing the tools that have been used and are used in educational technology. Dr. Nyarai, what are our educational technology tools or digital edu educational tools for teachers and students? I know people have heard of uh, Edmodo, which is an educational tool that uh, connects teachers and students and is assimilated um, into social network. What other tools do we have? Um, the internet is now full of lots of these tools. Uh, but what is important is not just to look at the tools, but further to look at uh, their use in the teaching and learning. Right. So I will just mention some of the tools yes. and identify what areas they are being used for and what how should teachers be able to evaluate a tool. Because yes. I know as teachers, they get frustrated they hear that there is edge mundu, yes. and they go on to edge mundu, right. and trying to use it, uh, they might not have the actual functionality of the edge mundu yes. that relates to whatever they want to engage with. Yes. Uh, in simple terms, mm. so this is what we, we 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 are trying to avoid as educational technologies. Yes. We just we don't want to just give these teachers technologies but we also want them to be able to evaluate some of this technology of specifically for their intended use. Yes. So yes. we do have, uh, I have a few here. Okay. I've got uh, what they call Class Dojo. Okay. Uh, it is a tool 
that educators can use to improve students' behavior. Oh. You know, it's very difficult to manage students in <laughs> classes, yeah. uh, even <laughs> online as well. Yes. You find that if you go online, you always have some students who won't be behaving well. Yes, uh, so there are some uh, applications that you can use these. Mm -hmm. uh, like in this case, teachers provide their students with instant feedback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Feedback is quite important when yes. you, you want to control a class. For example, we, when we're taught how to teach, mm. we're taught that by calling a student's name, yes. it will make them pay attention. That's true. So yeah. let's say you are in a virtual platform, how do you? <laughs> and no. you've got 250 students. Exactly. So yeah, it's quite, uh, it's quite important that uh, these tools might also be important for, uh, especially if you're looking at this one, uh, where we're talking about how this tool can be, be a form of discipline, yes. especially in primary school students. Yes. Uh, we've got uh, Ted Edge, uh, which is my very favorite uh, okay. tool that is online. Yes. Uh, it's an educational platform that allows creating educational lessons with collaboration of teachers, okay. students, and uh, people who do some animation. So it's a community of practice. Right. For example, let's say I want to develop, I want to develop a lesson. Mm. I can go go and be a member of this TEDx, okay. and there are some tools there that I can make use of. So this is one platform mm -hmm. uh, that one can use, and we do have what they call the story bed. Okay. Uh, the story bed aims to promote writing and reading skills. So you find that within out out there, we've got we really have got these tools yes. that are yes. meant for specific yes. uh, intense if for specific goals. That's Let's right. say you want your learners to be able to write and read. Yes. Uh, it's very difficult to to tell a, a, a grade three student to mm. say uh, go and read. Yes. Um, yes. A book. <laughs> and I've got a grandchild, she will tell you, no, I've read those books, I'm tired of reading. Yeah. She wants to engage online, she wants <laughs> she wants a remote and a computer next year. That's so there true. are some tools that can help uh, teachers uh, promote reading and writing yes. skills in students. Yeah. So, uh, so we, we do have also Animoto. Okay. Animoto is a digital tool that allows you to create high quality videos mm -hmm. in a short time. Yes. I know some some teachers might be uh, might always say, ah, I'm not a skilled person. Yes. But with this yes. some of these platforms, they are so you can self teach yourself mm. how to do things mm. and practice just the way we we're doing when we we're learning how to write charts yes. Uh, yes. in chat training. Mm. So the, these are some of the the tools that we can, we have out there. We have Kahoot. Mm. Kahoot, I've, I've taught it to my students and they really use it yeah. uh, when I go and observe them for teaching practice. Yes. Uh, it's an educational platform that is based on games and questions. Mm. So you teach them a concept and you create a, a, a quiz like where the students will be answering whilst they, you are asking the questions mm. and the results are shown on board. Yes. Students are so excited about, yes. about being actively engaged in uh, some of these tools. Yeah. So just those are some of the tools that I can mention of mm. yet. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but there are several tools out there. Okay, all right. So there's a lot of tools, and, and from what you've just explained, it really tells us that it's, it's not just something that is left out there for guessing and stuff. It's, it's well planned. And these mm. tools can actually really, really make a difference. Sorry, can you come again? I'm saying the tools that you've just mentioned, they, they leave no guess, uh, uh, space for guessing or second guessing. They are well uh, planned and well uh, uh, put in place so that they put everything in order and it makes it easier for the educator and also for the learners to be part of mm. the teaching. Definitely, definitely. Mm. The, the tricky part now is how do teachers engage with these tools? Right. Okay. That is where the, the, the whole issue about this digital educational tools mm. and how effectively are they able to engage with this for, for them to achieve their learning outcomes. Yes. So uh, just a word of caution, yes. uh, before one can start to use these digital tools, it is important that one understand what is it that they want to achieve. You don't just use any tool because it's a tool. Yeah. Or you don't just use technology yeah. because everyone expect, is expected to use technology. Yes. What is it that technology is going to help you to achieve yes. a, at the end of the day? True. What technologies are available for mm. students? I cannot go on Kuhutu knowing mm. that my mm. students don't have access to devices. They, they are not allowed to bring in mobile devices in school. Yes. And yes. I engage with 
good. So it's a it's a war um, issue of planning on the teacher uh, on the teacher side of this yes. story, yes. where they need to well to plan well as well as to see what really works and what doesn't work. What doesn't work. Yes, Dr. Temple, would you like to to comment on these tools? Are they really helpful? Um, yes, I think uh, from a, a higher educational point of view, mm. there's quite a lot of uh, tools or resources that are available for educators yes. and also for students. Yes. And uh, mm. from the top of uh, you know my head, mm. it's, it's just the tool uh, that enables us obviously to record our lectures mm. and make them available, etc. Yes. Et yes. Some lecturers use Zoom for that. Yes, uh, there's also Loom. Okay. Uh, which is also another very uh, useful tool yes. uh, that you can basically choose whether you want to actually deliver your lectures, uh, okay. you know, with with both uh, video on yes. or audio. Okay. And uh, there's also other tools that I actually feel are more supplementary okay. in terms of aiding mm -hmm. uh, the learners to uh, understand things better or to do things better. Yes. Yes. Just to give you an example, uh, for most uh, students in South Africa, you know, English is not our first language, That's or we right. don't actually learn English as yes. of a first language yes. from, from high school. Yes. So currently, you know, with the development of um, artificial intelligence, mm. boards, etc., mm. there's quite a number of applications out there that assist learners in writing better. Right. Uh, so in as much as you can find an app mm. that can actually help you paraphrase things or write things in a uh, pure English, mm. uh, you know, it mustn't be something that is actually used to the detriment of the learners, yes, where, yes. you know, it encourages uh, laziness That's and, right, you know, yes. um, the creativity mm. doesn't actually happen. Yes. So the tools are there, but like what Doc was saying, mm. it's very important mm. to understand where to use these tools and for, for what. Then yes. they become very, very effective. Yes, yeah. yes. So just on a lighter note, uh, Dr. Nyerai and you, Dr. Tembi, we've heard all of this. And there's, there's a parent out there who's had bad experiences with technology and have a question that says, is technology good for education? How can you answer that? Let's start with you, Dr. Nyerai. Uh, I think I will be a bit biased here um, because I'm coming uh, from an educational technology point of view um, where um, within this technological development and advancement there are parental control tools that we can use. Yeah. So for example, for me, um, what I'm just going to advise everyone whom I'm meeting is Yay, you need to embrace change. Okay. Okay. Change is inevitable. Yes. Let's identify the affordances and deal with the challenges with an open mind. Mm. Mm. You cannot say, my child, I'm not going to expose my child to digital tools. Yes. For instance, I've got parents who say, told in me, if, if point blank, to say, oh, you're right. I'm sorry, I mean, you are telling us that technology can do this to, I mean, it can help my, my child learn and it can do this, yeah. but I'm not going to allow my child because of one, two, three things. Yeah. But okay. to me, I come back to them and say, I mean, of all things, I mean, how many other challenges do we physically, in our physical well-being, mm. uh, do we meet these challenges? Mm. And remember, when um, cars were invented. Yes. People were like, ah, cars are dangerous. You, 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 you they, they cause accidents. Yes. But yes. today, cars are like uh, bicycles. Yeah, they're more of a necessi right? necessity are, now. Yes, yes. So, I mean, let's let's embrace change as okay. parents. Okay. And let's identify the affordances and deal with the challenges. Mm. So, within the educational technology um, issue, in terms of parenting uh, control, in, in terms of parents engaging with their uh, children as they uh, engage with technology, mm. I always advise uh, or educate uh, parents on parental controls that the software that and tools that allow parents to set controls on their children's internet use. Okay. It's very important that parents do understand that. Just like the way we protect our kids, don't go to the uh, shop alone. Yes. You go with your, yes. your brother or you do, don't go anywhere, you, you know. Those are there as well online. We do have software tools that are, are, are enable us to control yeah. um, devices of our kids. Okay. They are a great way of helping prevent children from accessing unsuitable content online. Yes. So yes. these do come in uh, three main categories. We've, we've got network level controls where within my home 
or within a school network. Yes. I think most schools do that. We do have some controls that are set on the hub or router uh, and apply to all devices that are connected through that uh, hub. Yes. So it means that if it is a school, we block sites that are not relevant uh, for, uh, for kids. Mm. <laughs> and uh, that is network control. Then we've got device level controls. Yes. These are set on devices itself. Oh, okay. I buy my child a smartphone. Yes, yes. I yes. can put on the controls there. Wow. Before I even bless them with the, the device, yes. I'll just sit down with them and say, I'm controlling this mm. because this tool can. It's more on parenting. Okay. Uh, okay. You know? Okay. So that those are some of the things. And also on application uh, controls, there are some application level controls okay. that one can make use of where uh, some settings can be applied. For yes. example, if you look at Google, yes. we now yes. have Google Kids. Okay. Okay. When our children have got access to, to mm. these devices, when they go on Google, the normal, the ordinary Google that we use, yes. the moment yes. they type something, all sorts of things come. Yes. Okay. But if, if we are using uh, with them on a Google Kid mm. platform, yes. which is called Kidu, Kidu has got a, a educational resources, okay. videos, all those games that we've been talking about, all those resources that are meant for uh, school age going kids uh, to use. So with that, we are able to control that my child should not use the google.com yes my child i block that okay and this, okay as well as on youtube you can control we yes. do have some accounts for youtube let's say in a network environment yes. my child is able to connect to this platform to this platform to okay. this platform okay. if a teacher gives them a platform to access i as a parent mm. need to unlock that platform and, and and enable it so that my child can be able to have access to some of the platforms that could have been logged out. I hear you, Doctor. Before we, we hear Dr. Tembe's opinion, are you saying that, uh, especially for Google Kids, uh, parents must play an, an, an active role as well? Except for being concerned that their kids are going to be spoiled or, or get into the wrong uh, platforms or technology. They must play an active role. Yes, parents should be taking an active role. I think even in the physical uh, learning environment, yes. a parent should be very active in right. their children's education yes. and upbringing. Wow, thank you. Dr. Tammy, what do you think about this? Yeah, I, I also agree uh, with the fact that, you know, parents need to also come to the party and be involved and understand the kind of activities that their children actually, you know, get to do in these online platforms. Yes. But the one angle that we also need to take into account is which parent you know are we trying to address here because there's different um, socioeconomic uh, factors that yes. come into play yes. some children do not have uh, you know um, assistance mm. by parents who've got the technology know-how yes. of how some of these of gadgets course. work so that is our role as educators mm. as well mm. to facilitate platforms yes. where we can also invite parents mm. to you know give them an overview of yes. some of the controls for yes. instance that can also be put into play right. so that they can be able to have a way of monitoring this yes. kind of activities yes. because the minute a parent is uncomfortable mm. about technology mm. is because they don't know what is going on yes. or they also don't know how to uh, check you yeah. know the logs of the kind of activities yeah. that have been taken territory for them yes it is okay. so it is a gap and I believe that as educators, we need to come up with a mechanism that will bring the parents on board and familiarize them with the use of these technologies so that they can also assist their, stu I mean, their children yes. at home on yes. you know, the best use of, of this technology. Okay. Uh, some years ago, I um, conducted a, a research okay. um, trying to determine the social use or mm. the social impact rather mm. of uh, the internet right. on the high school learners. Okay. And it was okay. quite shocking okay. to uncover the type of information, the mm. type of content mm. that you know the high schoolers get to the internet uh, yeah. to check out. Yes. So if you're a parent, you won't know until you actually know how yeah. to maybe ask the right questions okay. or monitor certain yes. activities, yes. then at least you will become once yeah. you know that you know uh, everything is done accordingly and most of that content has nothing to do with education exactly <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go on a commercial break and when we come back we talk more of of the subject
Tech Talk brought to you by Tamani Technologies and Systems. Tamani Technologies and Systems takes leadership in fourth industrial revolution. The whole world is facing a transformation. The revolution will be developed into the following stages. Digitization, cyber security, internet of things, managed services, document management, and business applications. We provide business transformation and ICT solutions with presence in 13 African countries and two European countries. We are your leading partner in integrated platform providers, innovation leaders, standalone products, and innovation pace setters. Tamani Technologies and Systems, delivering value across continents. The power to defeat coronavirus is in our hands. Play your part by following these five basic precautions. Regularly wash your hands with soap and water or sanitizer for at least 20 seconds. Maintain a safe distance of at least one and a half meters from people around you. Wear a cloth mask at all times when in public. Always cough or sneeze into your elbow or tissue. If you're an employer, screen your employees daily for symptoms of COVID-19 and where appropriate, refer for testing. Working together, we can beat the coronavirus. A message from government. Challenge your ordinary. Experience the extraordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Now, I believe that my peace is my most valuable asset. Absolutely beautiful! This is exactly what I was looking for. Camping, 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 DJ Khaled! It is a day to celebrate. We're ready for action. I like it when it's nice and soft. Yeah, that is yeah. nice. How was it like growing up in Nigeria? Yes, sir, yes, sir, you know what it is. Feeling is there that, you know, you're doing something special. Stop being so dramatic, Mira. You should just be what you want to be. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. Educational technology creates, uses, and manages technological processes and educational resources to help improve user academic performances. It encompasses several domains including learning theory, computer-based training, online learning, and M-learning, where mobile technologies are used. Now, I'm going to engage Dr. Nyarai and Dr. Tembi here, but I'll start with you, Dr. Nyarai. What are the elements of educational technology? Now, we know that um, there are three main components of technology in education. Could you tell us about them, please? Um, thank you, Mpun. Mm. I hope I got you well. Yes. Uh, because um, there, there, there could be some different semantics here where we're talking about e e technology in education yes. and yes. educational technology. Yeah. Mixing the two uh, terminologies um, might be a bit confusing, but let yeah. me answer it uh, from the way yes, I've please. understood it. Yes. Um, if you're looking at the educational technology um, as a domain, in the teaching and learning process, uh, it, it does have three main components. Uh, if you, uh, we're talking about technology, yes, and we're talking about uh, the pedagogical mm -hmm. uh, knowledges, yes. which basically involve the uh, the methods or the strategies that teachers use yeah. for learning to take place. Yes. and then we do have the content knowledge which is uh, what is it that we intend our learners mm. to understand or to know uh, within this uh, dimension. Yes. So those are the basically three main components when, you in, we, when we are dealing with educational technology. Yes. And uh, with that, uh, this came about um, in, in mid in 20th century right. where, educate, uh, where, where researchers in education were like, how do we make teaching effective. Yes. I know that uh, I think we all have been, uh, from my background, I remember 
when um, our country in Zim uh, got independence, everyone was a teacher. Right. As long as you went to school, you became yes. a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the methods that they were using then, they mm. were b basically behaviorist methods where they want they okay. want to say, you, are you able to count one to ten? Yes. And to count one to ten yes. without understanding, yes. without really a uh, real learning. If one starts at eight and say, can you count on? You yes. find that some learners would not have comprehended the art of that counting number line. Yes. So with that background of understanding, then questions like how do we make um, teaching and learning mm. effective mm. so that our learners understand concepts? Yes, yes. So uh, there's a guy called Schumann. In mm -hmm. uh, 1986, he came about with this model where he talked about it. For, for teachers are unique in that, that they understand learners. Yes. You understand the different learning styles that are out there. Right. You understand that we've got visual learners. You understand that we've got auditory learners, yes. kinesthetic learners, and all those uh, different styles of learning. Yes. So with that, they brought the concept of the pedagogy. Mm. I think it, is, it has been there, but then it was well defined in, yes. in the context of uh, teacher training. Yes. We will yes. need to train teachers who are able to effectively teach. Yes. I think we all came from universities where we have some professors who knows their content. Yes, true. But delivering it, mm. for me to understand it, mm. it, it, it could have been very difficult. Yes. So this is where the PCK, Pedagogical Content Knowledge um, Model, came into being. Yes. So with the advent of technology now, you realize that you have the understanding of teaching, you have the understanding of content yeah. and mixing these there are two domains, yes. but now with the advent of technology, technology came into being. So uh, then there was a question, so how does this technology come in? Mm. So uh, some two guys um, came about with this new, uh, new educational technology framework where they are saying that teachers should have what they call TPEC, technological uh, pedagogical mm. content knowledge right. framework. Yes. So for one to be an effective teacher, they need to understand the technology that yes. they are going to be using. Yes. They also need to understand how it, it, it complements what they want to achieve yes. Yes. and the different learning styles that our learners have. They For have. example, we do have teachers using PowerPoint yes. for teaching. Yes. It's a, it, it, already they've started using technology, yes. but in this context, uh, you realize that the PowerPoint could just be a replacement of the chalkboard. That's right. Which yes. is very effective. Yes. Because our learners are busy taking notes. They are not even t listening to the teacher what they That's are true. saying. Yeah. So that uh, leaves a gap in terms of uh, understanding what exactly yeah. um, is being taught. Right. Dr. Nyerai, just to interject on that, um, as we come to the end of the show, I'd just like to, to, to hear from you and uh, the, your last words and you, Dr. Tembi, what can you say then to the, the educators out there and the learners out there right now in closing of the show, those who are still skeptical about this and those who are taking it full on? Let's start with you, Dr. Tembi, in closing. I think my message is consistent for both educators and learners that, you know, yeah. our technology is here. It's a reality. Okay. And we just have to embrace it yes. and make the best use of it because yes. I don't see it any other way uh, that will regress and go back to the old way of yes. teaching right. and, and, and imparting uh, knowledge. Yes. So it's, it's a matter of seeking the necessary assistance where needed, yes. but to embrace this new change. And yes. I think it's also very, very ex exciting. Yes. I think we're likely to get a lot more done through technology yes. like never before. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Terby. Dr. Nyara, your last words, please. Um, my last words uh, to people out there is uh, technology is the new norm. Right. So remember, our products that we want to produce from these educational institutions yes. are for the communities. So there is four IR that is being uh, introduced in industries. Yes. How are our uh, products, our students that we are going to bring out right. of the school system yes. manage 
to fit in into the new norm that okay. is coming in. Well, As educators, yes. please, let's not resist change. Thank you. Let's embrace change. Thank you very much. Well, to my two special guests, Dr. Nyarai and Dr. Tembi, thank you very much for joining us in studio and on Tech Talk on Galaxy. Uh, to our viewers at home, please keep on sending those messages via Facebook and the social media because we'd like to answer the questions that you are left with and uh, we'll take them and uh, give you the answers on our next episode. But keep engaging with us on social media. From us on studio at Tech Talk on Galaxy with myself and Pumim Bama, sponsored by Tamani Technologies and Systems, we'd like to say to you goodbye.